If you don't have these tools or you're too busy, first things first, come with the willingness to uh, practice discipline. We will give you these tools. We will implement them in your business. We will hold you accountable for using them. But at the end of the day, there's one thing that I can't fix. And that's somebody that's unwilling to do what's necessary. So I got to make that really, really clear because I think there is some misconceptions that a checklist or an SOP is going to solve all the problems. No, they're just tools. They're tools that help us and make our jobs easier and make things move smoothly, but we need to embrace them. We need to understand the value of them. And we also need to understand that nobody's above them. There isn't a contractor that's successful out there, not one that we can point at that doesn't have these things in their business. Today we're going to be talking, we're going to be talking about the, the secrets of managing subcontractors mm. like a pro and we all do it. And I know subcontractors are completely different than managing staff. And I know a lot of contractors are generally using subcontractors. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I got plenty. So I'm going to try and go through um, what I know to be absolute mandatory in terms of your success with subcontractors. So first things first, set clear expectations up front. Be very clear. Get it in writing. What do you expect? What can they do? What can't they do? What is your, again, what are your policies, your procedures? And be clear with them up front. All right, straightforward. Um, we have a, a written SOP that goes to all of our subs and they accept the terms and conditions that we um, are going to hold them accountable to. All right. Right. And, you know, it's at the onboarding stage, right? Like right? we're talking about the onboarding. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You, using that's it, where it all starts. Yeah. That, that's right. But actually having a detailed subcontractor agreement that's not written for a lawyer as much as it's written to be clear in terms to the subcontractor. So I, like I, I don't use legal language. I use straightforward, you know, bullet points. This is what we expect. This is, you know, this is a consequence of this happening. This is, you know, again, this is what we guarantee we're going to provide. This is like, again, just making sure things are crystal clear. And all it really took was every commonly answered question that I ever got from a subcontractor. I turned it into an SOP and a document. And I made that the upfront thing that we signed. That's a good point because mm -hmm. there are a lot of common questions that they ask. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And when somebody's thinking about investing in your business as a subcontractor, because that's what they're doing, they're, 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 they're considering a partnership and that's the way you must treat them because they are a business that True. is within your business, all right? Right. Is, again, if you make it unclear of how they can be successful with you or unclear of what the rules are to engagement, um, you will almost always get poorer subs, number one, all right? The best subs want security, okay? Other subs that are just, and I see this all the time, you know, those those subs that come in, they, yeah, they can bang off a lot of work, all right? But they're going to leave you sore and high and dry very quickly. And I warn people yeah. against those those subs all the time because they're they're only using you as a, as a, um, a stepping stone. All right. And that's fine if that's if that's what you want. But if you're clear about that, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you make it clear yeah. there's rules to engagement, right? Um, and you know, with that, you have to establish a very clear communication process. So we use again company cam. We we follow the word of our agreement, right? So every job will start with a work order. Every job will have a material list. Every job will will have a pre-job. Uh, plan and we do that through company cam where there's a discussion there's you know a handoff that's that occurs all right every job is done the same way and we vet very carefully we we check their references we go and check their work we we spend time actually deciding if this is person that we want to get in bed with because here's the thing um too often i see guys that are desperate for any help hire the first guy with a pulse and they get burned and they, yeah. you know, and, and th these lawsuits can go on for, for years. I mean, I still, I can still vividly recall, you know, having, you know, callbacks from jobs we did 10 years ago with a bad sub. And again, you know, you're still on the hook for it, still your name and, and reputation. So take the time, 
um, I feel like guys don't take the time to really look at who they're dealing with because the amount of problems we've avoided by just asking around, just going and looking at their work and being like, nope, this is not a fit, right? This, the, the ladies don't meet. But again, you're making a major investment of, and, and you've got to understand like this, this has the opportunity, especially if they're, if they move quick and they get lots of work done, like that's a lot of liability. If you're dealing with somebody you don't pay that's, attention. that's right. They can do a lot of damage in a short oh, amount of time. No, for sure. For We've sure. all experienced that. I wanted to ask you, you mentioned about like company cam and, mm-hmm. and using these systems to kind of get the feedback loop going and yep. get the reporting back and forth, right? So it, the communication. That's right. So having them actually, uh, again, update at a certain period. So we don't pay our subs unless they update company cam at sections of work. Ask. So if they want to get paid, they have to again, provide us with with pictures showing us milestones. The paper went on, you know, they use four clips, like all those things. And we have a supervisor that's having ongoing communication back and forth. When we see something, you know, we're on it, right? Like it's it's making, f- that's right. And, and again, subs need reinforcement and you still have to supervise your subs. If you do, if you choose not to supervise your subs, you will eventually end up with a very mediocre performance or somebody that's, you know, and, and it happens all the time. Like somebody that comes in that was really good at the beginning and then a couple of months down the road, you know, they're, they're, they're essentially ruined. Right. Yeah. Well, you say that like at the very, at the very beginning, you know, the onboarding process and the communication and the signing of the documents and you're, you're laying out, um, you know, these systems that you want them to, report and these mm-hmm. reporting systems so they're agreeing to it at the very beginning yeah, and we they're hold reinforcing them to it. it through the process that's right because right. uh, and i mentioned this because i know a lot of people you know myself included struggle to have uh, subcontractors actually use these systems really shit. Like, really? cool then go somewhere else exactly exactly if but they're not agreed to it at the beginning that's right if they're not and again you they're far more open at the beginning when you set those expectations and you show them and my my answer to that is hey do you have facebook Good. If you have Facebook, because you contacted me probably through Facebook, <laughs> you can figure you, it out. You're gonna figure it out, and yeah. we have the training for it. So, like again, it's totally on them. At the end of the day, if it's ref- a requirement of payment, if they, <laughs> it's always helpful. If they refuse, you know, I basically refuse to pay. It's simple as that, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. that's never that's never the thing, but I'm gonna use that as my leverage until they understand that. Listen, we're we're fair, and we will always pay our bill, always. But you're going to play by the rules in the agreement that we signed or we're not going to play. That's simple as that yeah, yeah. because there's yeah. too much on the line. And again, this is not you, – you are coming into my business, all right? And I'm, I'm here to earn a profit. I'm here to um, avoid the, the problems that come with employees and – I am looking to pay, you know, I am paying a premium if I'm, if I'm paying properly. All right. And I have expectations just like my customers have expectations of me and we agreed to certain things and they're not unreasonable. If they were, you had a chance to back out. I'm not putting these things on as a, you know, an extra to our agreement. All right. I always will take them back to the documents that they've signed. All right. Nothing exists. You know, again, if, if, if one of my supervisors is trying to get them to do something outside of that, they have the right to say no. They have a right to get an adjustment or, um, you know, again, it's about being it fair. It works both ways. But, yeah. but you got to be tough. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. You have to be tough with these guys because they will not, not respect unfair. you. They're looking mm-hmm. for you, all right, to guide them. And if you can't, all right, this is where things begin um, to fall apart. And this is where leverage gets taken, right? The other thing you have to do in my in – my, and, and – I can't stress this enough. A business of even the smallest size, you have to track performance. You have to track quality control. If you're not willing to do those things, don't get subs. All right. And I, I think at that point, Jay, it'd be fair for for you know any people that are new to the community to understand what you mean by yep. tracking performance. Simple. Like what tools do we have? So again, this could be that? a checklist. It could be a written checklist that you're going to just document from from you know their performance. So there, the expectations that were set in the in the original agreement. All right. It comes with a quality control checklist. You've seen a quality control checklist, right? And you have a scorecard for the job. So hey. Did they show up when they said they would show up? Did they clean up the way the agreement said? So you take your whole agreement, those commonly answered questions, all right? Like, how do we do this? How do we do that? Those are check marks on a, on a, on a printout sheet if, if you need to be. But you're going to track that performance and, and hold them accountable to the agreement. 
hold them accountable and keep score because again, you will start to see the patterns. If you, you are looking to have somebody that comes in and does the same job every single time that you can count on, all right, you want the least amount of variables and problems. If somebody's like not consistent, that's an indicator that you shouldn't be working with them. All right. That's going to eventually cost you. Okay. Now shit happens, problems happen, but here's the thing that I see the most out of a lot of contractors, even, even, you know, guys that have been around a while is that they don't realize that subs are eventually become like horses, right? All horses go lame, all horses, just like employees. All right. They all go lame. And, and at the end of the day, we have to be prepared for that. And we have to be able to pull our, our stop loss at a certain point. All right. And what happens is they end up with a lame horse that hasn't ran a race. And, you, you know, it started off as a, a right. And, and instead of taking it behind the barn and shooting it, they continue to try and get this, you know, this Wait, lame horse. <laughs> well, hypothetically. Horses. Hypothetically, you can, you can do that. I think you're supposed to, or put them out <laughs> the to pasture. Cheap, we'll be more politically, <laughs> politically correct. Like we're not going to keep feeding them. That's that's for sure, right? Because they become a liability and a risk to you. Now they may have been very good at one point, all right, but don't don't lose track. And that's the point, right? Every job starts off as a fresh job. Okay, so performance matters, and holding them accountable to these standards matters. All right, just like with your employees, yeah, but yeah. track. It's so simple. It's so easy. And then you're setting, the, you're, you're setting the expectation. And again, if you want to run a business, and I'm sorry, there's too many guys out there that just have an, a delusional um, view of this. They, are, they still need super, supervision. If you're not willing to supervise your subs or if you feel like your subs are capable of just completely being unsupervised on your jobs, okay. You should probably not be a contractor because I have a rule, you know, trust but check. All right. It's my fault if I didn't do a quality control check. I didn't like that's all me, right? I'm, yeah. I'm agreeing yeah. to pay for that service. And, and that's, it's an obligation to your clients as well. Absolutely. And again, you for sure. what you're going to realize though is, you know, who's the deal between? Is it between you and your customer? All right. Or between your, your sub and your customer? Because if you want it to be between your sub and your customer, don't show up. Don't be present. Don't do That's your due point. diligence. You are again. You are you are professional, and you need to be there. And you you need to provide directions. You need to be clear. You need to do a couple of things. Now, can you scale with subs? Absolutely. You know. And again, there are there are exceptions to some of these rules that I'm that I'm sharing with you. But like for the most most guys out here probably listening, you know, they want to get a couple of subs to you know to speed up their projects or you know to get more work done. Again, these are basic. These yeah. are basic rules. These are basic things yeah. that you have to do, right? And you need to be proactive in problem resolution. Do not wait till the end of the job to start, you know, solving change work orders and stuff. You need to be on top of these things if you have a sub. The first, the first problems that always occur is going to be when something changes. How do you handle it? Or something is broken, or something bad happens. How do you? react or how do you handle the situation yes and that's where standard operating procedures come absolutely in, so so again right, right. this this avoiding the the tough conversations or avoiding um you know upsetting subs i see that i hear that a lot where again they they, they almost put them on a pedestal and eh, we all want to be nice people right? well there's no room for nice guys <laughs> i'm sorry not in, in, not, in not, not in contracting business. and here's the yeah. thing your sub will not respect you if you go that route that's going to make you look weak um, overall. Now, there's a difference. There's a fine line. You need to be fair, all right? You need to be, you know, again, um, outgoing, I so will say. difference between but, assertive and aggressive. Right. But, but right? let there be no mistake that, you know, in our world, it's a dictatorship, right? If they want to, if they want to work with us, and I'm not I'm, – I'm not exaggerating. I'm willing to take I that stance. I just love the stand. way you said it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no flies up because at the end, who's, who's paying my liability? Who, who's the it one that you. has to hold the re ultimate responsibility for it all? Great. So why would it ever be that I am equal with the sub? How could that ever be? We're, like That's like being equal with your employee. At what point does it, do you level out where you are level with your employee? And if you do take that position, get out of business. Give up now. Go, just go get a job because you have, yeah. no, you have no space in, in this world. <laughs> 
So you were talking a little bit about, you know, obviously standard operating procedures, checklists, like, you know, all these, all these, you know, systems and, and processes that most contractors don't have time for this stuff. Oh yeah. See, these things are, right? these things are time savers. These right. are time savers. So like, let's add it up for a second. No, most contractors refuse to do what's necessary to be successful. That is, the, that is a reality and that's a fact. And if you're listening to it and you're not doing these things, you're one of them. So either you have a decision to make now to be on the side that we know that works. So these are time savers. These are, these are business savers, okay? If you don't have a quality control and you're not willing to put out checklists or you're too busy to do those things, then what, what are you actually what – you, what do you think the outcome is going to be? Right. Okay. And, I, and I'm speaking, well, when I say this, I'm speaking, you know, from the perspective of the average, which is a huge amount of contractors, but the average contractors, you know, I don't have time for this shit. I, it, everything's too busy. It's all moving parts and all that sort of stuff. But if they were to ask the question, how, how can I get help doing this? Right? Yeah. So it's very simple. If you don't have these tools or you're too busy, um, first things first, come with the willingness to uh, practice discipline. We will give you these tools. We will implement them in your business. We will hold you accountable for using them. But at the end of the day, there's one thing that I can't fix. And that's somebody that's unwilling to do what's necessary and what's what's going to get results, what's proven, all right? So I got to make that really, really clear because I think there is some misconceptions that, you know, a checklist or, you know, an SOP is going to solve all the problems. No, that they're just tools. They're tools that help us in, and make our jobs easier and make things move smoothly, but we need to embrace them. We need to understand the value of them. And we also need to understand that nobody's above them. There isn't a contractor that's successful out there not one that we can point at that doesn't have these things in their business.